Good afternoon, I'm Ryan Fulms. I'm a product manager with Macdon Industries. <clears throat> I want to take a little bit of time and talk about our Draper products. With us today we have a 35 foot D60 as well as a 35 foot FD70. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the product, some changes we've made for 2012 as well as some features and benefits of the two. We start with a wind roar application. We offer a D50 and a D60. The D50 is more of your cereal crop style header, more for cutting up off the ground, cutting those cereals and then having the ability to get down on the ground and get that down lodged crop when you run into it. A little bit lighter duty reel running 19 ounce drapers available in that 30 and 35 foot size with a single span reel. If you step up to the D60, it's available in 15 up to 40 foot sizes. Many different options as far as split reel once you get up to 30 and larger sizes double knife drive, <clears throat> heavier duty drapers, and options such as cutter bar poly, slow speed transport, upper cross auger, which are also available on the D50, but it's a little bit heavier duty package, more for that on the ground style application. With the D60 and the D50, both are available to put on your, into a combine adapter, a CA20 that we offer to put on most of your major model combines, your Case, your John Deere, your Lexion, your Agco products. So between the, the FD70, which we're going to spend a little more time walking around, and the D50 and D60, there's a lot of similarities. So a lot of the things that apply on the FD70 will also apply on the D60 as we make our way around. That being said, we're going to start on the FD70. We'll start around the backside and talk a little bit about some product changes to start with. We'll start around back here as far as changes go on our CA20 combine adapter. For those of you who are familiar with the product, you notice the gearbox has changed some. In the past, we've used a gearbox with a big poly cover on it. Now gone to a, a aluminum housing gearbox. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to work on, a little better serviceability, a little better durability on the product. So that's available on all the 2012 CA20s. Continuing around, you can see our Draper tension decal. Just an indication, makes it a little bit easier to read. Proper tension your side drapers, you read through this slot here. It's a white indicator. Basically, you want it to cross the slot and cover the inboard half. So this decal just makes that a little clearer to the customer. Continue around and have a look underneath the FD70. This also applies to your D60. The supports underneath here for your draper, the ones that help guide your draper up over top of the legs, help support your draper on the underside, those have actually doubled in size just to help support that draper, reduce the wear that we see on the slats. So that's for all 2012 product. Another change on our CA20 is the way we attach the front feed deck. In the past, there's been two chain links held on with a cast hook. We have seen in some, in some applications some wear there. We've changed that to basically a ball joint style. Works a lot better as far as durability goes, and it is interchangeable to old product. There is a little bit of welding required to do that, but there is a kit to retrofit that. We've done some extra reinforcement on the back side of the CA20. You can see right in this area here. That's on both sides, just to give us a little more, better, uh, a little more durability there. Another big change, and for those customers that are familiar with the FD70, we've always provided a flex wrench, we called it. Basically, this was always used for setting your wing balance on your FD70. We've changed that wrench a little bit, and we've actually added a toggle here on the combine adapter to allow you to use that wrench for both setting your float and your wing balance. I'll show you how to do that a little bit later when we do the walk around. Now we talked about a little bit about the 2012 changes on the product. We'll just kind of go around the product and, and put out some features and benefits and some things that kind of apply to all the CA20s, FD70s, and so on and so forth. To start with, this is our, our CA20, our combine adapter. Much the same product you've seen over the last couple of years. Uh, we use one main frame itself. Your top beam and your legs are kind of hy your hydraulic reservoir. We use what we call a window frame, which is basically our completion package. The portion that actually touches the combine feeder house is what actually adapts it to that combine. So one for a John Deere is going to be different from a case, so on and so forth. So that's all you need if you ever take one in on trade or customer trades models of combines. We would change your multi-coupler and your wiring harness to match the combine. So that's all part of your completion package. So pretty easy to adapt between models and brands of combines. From there, we're just single drive into this gearbox. Remember we did say that changed for 2012, but basically your gear drive to two hydraulic pumps. One pump runs your sickle, the other pump's running your drapers, and then we're mechanically driven through to your feed auger that we'll see once we get around the front of the header. Moving on to the header, you can see this header has our slow speed transport stabilizer wheel package on it. Basically these wheels swing underneath the header and you can tow it down the road lengthwise behind your combine. Slow speeds to 25 miles an hour. 
but it also acts as a stabilizer weed in the field. So that's, that's gonna be more for your off the ground cutting application, your barley or wheat, that kind of thing, where you wanna leave your six or eight inches of stubble. Your wheels help stabilize the header as it's going through the field. This FD70, 35 foot is single knife drive. You can see we're hydraulically driven to the knife. Once you get up to the 40 and 45 foot size and the 40 foot size, you have an option to go double knife. The 45 is a double knife drive, so two hydraulic motors on either end. We'll continue around the front of the header. We're gonna have a look at the pickup reel. You can see on all flex drapers, it is a split reel. Okay, that works with our, our flex draper design. And basically, the, the basic concept of a flex header is everybody assumes it has a flexible cutter bar. With the MacDon design, we're actually a three section header, which means the outside sections, we call them wings, move independently your center section and your reel's supported by that. So basically you have two wings, and as the wings go down or the wings go up, your reel moves with it. And that's where the big benefit is, is your reel to cutter bar relationship is maintained all the way through. As opposed to when you have a flexible cutter bar, at any one point in time, you may have six to eight inches of gap between your reel tine and your cutter bar itself. So by going with that three section design, we keep that smooth, consistent feeding that you see with a draper header. Let's talk a little bit about our PR15 pickup reel. Again, the same reel we've been running on the D50s up to the FD70s. Um, we do call it a parabolic shape reel. Basically what that means is if, is if you have a close look, you can see that the real tine tube is actually a different distance in the center to the center tube than it is on the ends. So basically it's an hourglass shape. The reason we do that, simply the reel supported on the ends, it is going to sag some in the middle, it's gonna bow. That keeps your real tine to cut of our clearance nice and even across. Again, keeping that nice smooth feeding that you experience with a draper header. Talk a little bit about the draper. Draper itself, not much has changed there. We're still running a dual V-guide on the drapers on the FD70 and the D60, which basically means there's a V-guide on the back side that helps track that draper. There's also one on the front side, and the reason is for that is your front 18, 20 inches or so of your draper is actually where you see most of your crop load, most of your dirt, most of your wear. So as that front edge, is it, if it starts to wear out, you can actually take that draper off and spin it around and use it again, just to give you a little bit better life out of it. One of the big advantages of the MacDon product is our C-shaped cutter bar. Basically, we call it a C-shape, well, because it's shaped like a C. But if you have a look at that cutter bar, it's shaped like a C, our draper runs on the inside of it, okay? And what's really important there is your draper to cutter bar relationship. You keep that nice and snug, that way you don't get debris inside. So you should be able to check and make sure that that draper is running right on the inside of that cutter bar. And if you look at the very back edge, you can actually see we run an extra strip of material. And that just helps seal at that cutter bar. That's the same on the front side. Again, so you can flip that draper around. Move to our center section here. Run a 78.7 inch wide feed draper. Nice and wide, nice and big, helps let that crop come in, especially for crops like peas, big and fluffy. A nice big opening allows that crop to come down and get grabbed by the big feed auger in the center. Run a 22 inch feed auger. You can see there's actually two sections of flighting on there to help convey that crop in. And then it's also a retracting tine drum. So you, the fingers here, you can see they're in the, the forward or the, their feeding application. So the crop's gonna come in, those retracting fingers are gonna grab it and release it on the backside. Inside that auger is also a reversing mechanism that when you kick your feeder house in reverse to back out that slug, the fingers are actually gonna change timing. Your fingers are gonna be out of the backside, grab that crop from the feeder house and release it the front just to help you reverse a little bit better. Your feed draper, you can see actually underneath, like we always have, there's always been a poly pan. That just helps with both clean out, the pan will drop down, as well as if you put a rock or anything underneath there, it'll actually push that pan up. It may stall out your feed draper, but as soon as you lift the header up and get it off that rock, it pops back down and you keep going. So a lot better than those steel pans that we've had in the past and that other competitive product are running. You can see the latch at the front side. This is one of the changes I was talking about earlier the latch to hold this feed deck up. You can see right in here, we used to have the two chain links. You can see it's a little more rigid, a little stronger connection point there. Again, that's on the 2012 product. I wanna show you the adjustment on the reel as well. You can adjust the pitch of your PR15. With this, with an FD70 or with any split, split reel headers, you're gonna see it's done in two places. Just a little bit easier to see on this end. But all you do here, 
take a three quarter inch wrench, turn this pin out, and you can actually rotate this cam to one of four positions. One is your least aggressive, so you have nice standing crop. You don't need the reel to do a whole bunch, that's where you'd be. Number four would be that really down tangled crop that you can't quite pick up. Put it in number four, it allows you to get that, crop, that reel out and actually stand that crop up to cut it off. So it does a really nice pickup job. You can see FD70 has, and D60s have hydraulic reel four aft. Allows you to adjust that on the go. Continue around the back side, you can see here's the other half of that slow speed transport kit. Here it is in field position. Again, that folds underneath the header for your slow speed transport application. The hitch also stores with the header, so it is a self-contained package. That way you're not leaving a hitch, you're not leaving a trailer on the side of the field, it always stays with it. One really big note is to make sure that when you're setting up your headers, you put that hitch on there, so when you set your float and wing balance, it is set correctly, because that will change your weights. We come around the right hand side, it's a little bit easier to see a few things. Up top here, this big white bracket is our automatic header height control as well as our, our tilt indicator. All flex drapers, the FD70s, and it's an option on the D60s to have hydraulic guard angle tilt. That's the cylinder up top. You can't quite see it behind that white indicator, but basically that allows you to tilt the guard angle of the header on the go. On this side, you, there's actually some numbers and that gives you an indication of how much ground pressure you're running. So this is what's gonna work with your auto header height control in your combine. So as you go across the field, it's always gonna keep it in that ultim optimum float range. Talked a little bit earlier about this new flex wrench. I'll kind of show you how it works here. As far as setting your float goes, you're going to put the wrench on this toggle down here. And now what you're going to do is actually push down on this wrench and you'll see that it's giving me an indication of how much ground pressure or how much weight there is on this. So as I push this, you'll note that this bell crank we call it, this big cast piece is actually going to raise up as I push down. So you're going to raise that up part way and you're going to take note of the indication. And if you check in the operator's manual, it'll show you what number you should be running at. So that allows you to set your float. We'll have a quick look at the wing balance as well on the FD70. You just take the poly cover off. This is another change I didn't mention earlier. It was a little bit harder to see, but if you have a look at this large bolt here, you'll note that the, we were running coarse thread in the past. We've gone to fine thread here, just for a little bit better clamping force, help hold that adjustment where it is. We have run into some, especially guys that are trailering them lots, you'll run into those loosening off. So that's changed here as well as on your lock. Now another benefit of the FD70 is your ability to go from flex to rigid very easily. And that's done right here. Basically, you've just got a spring rod here. You can see it's pointing to the lock position right now. All you do is flick this over, and it's gonna unlock that wing. So and we just went from rigid to flex by doing that. One on both sides. That now allows that wing to move independently of the center section. Again, our flex wrench, we can now use that to help set our wing balance. So done the same as it has in the past. You're gonna put it on here, but now all you wanna do is basically have the same force to go down as it is to go up. So that, now that'll help the customers set their float and wing balance with that new flex wrench, just to make things a little bit easier. That's a pretty, pretty basic walk around, give you some features and benefits on the FD70. Keep in mind there's a lot of similarities. Your drapers, your C-shaped cutter bar, your pickup reel, all of that is common to the D60. Pretty much the same again on the D50, the drapers are a little bit different. The reel is basically the same idea, a little bit lighter duty drive, but other than that, much the same product. Mm -hmm.